Yeah, well, without further ado, guys, it's game number two. Team Solo Mid versus Team Eager. Team Eager will have the counter pick option if they so please to take it in the chaos side for the solo lane. And TSM will have the first ban, and they will waste no time and get rid of Ymir, who... I'm a big fan of this ban. Yeah, Ymir is really, really good. Yeah, and I think it's the better version of Athena transitioning into late game. You saw Athena's all it's it's really not useful when it comes to late game, except for getting out of a team fight and then coming back in. But Dare normally full commits to team fights. He's either dead or he stays alive and they win the team fight. So Ymir just works better for him the yeah. later the game goes. And Athena, not much use. Yep, so Bologna gets picked up as well, picked up and banned here from Team Solo Mid as Isis will be taken out as well, making sure that Team Solo Mid does not have any early game presence. And now Team Solo Mid is left with the option, and that's going to be Sylvanas, which is very, very scary in the hands of Ionic. He really put this god on the map. Him yes. and Jeff Hinla. Him, him at the North American Regionals, where it was the last time we saw these teams compete. Ionic played it fantastically, going to get it here. There's almost no chance that you lose lane with the Sylvanas. No. There, and you, it, you and it also gives you mid harpy control, yes. which is even bigger. Because you're pushed up and you're able to rotate. And freely. that was really the saving grace of Eager in that game number one. I mean, they dominated the mid harpies and Team Solo Med couldn't get to him at all. But, I mean, Sylvanas was able... Sylvanas will now make that easy for them. That's, that's guaranteed. But they will be going up against the Athena. The the, the real question is, is where this Athena I, will go. I feel like they're going to pick up Hoonbats here. If not, I, I really think that Eager loves that pick, mm. but they're going to draft the Neath this time, so they're not going to let Boosh get his hands on it. He played they fantastically should. last game, and once again, Neath, a flex pick. Lassus plays a very nasty Neath. Yeah, don't you remember that 1v1 versus Barracuda in that ranked game, bro? No. Oh, really? You no. never saw that? Mm-mm. Okay, there's a, there's a YouTube video of uh, Weekend uh, joining a rank queue with Lassus. Okay. And uh, he, Lassus starts off giving this crazy speech, and he 1v1s Barracuda, and he's just screaming, Hunters are hard. It's so <laughs> funny. Uh, but Tyr gets picked up going to Divius very early, uh, drafting this one here. And it's really just to, I, I guess, ban him out in the second phase? I'm assuming, because Eager very easily could spend a ban on Tyr. But additionally, now Eager doesn't have to waste a ban on Hades, which had such a profound effect against them late uh, in that series. And it's going to be an airy, so Aurora gets his Ares this time. Hey, a little bit off topic, but whatever happened to Bakasura? Baka, he lost his really... His strength was his huge kill potential at level 5. He took a nerf to his all. His minions do less damage. He still has kill potential at level 5, but it's not as easy, basically. Yeah. So now a nemesis gets cleared out of there, making sure they can't shred the protections... Well, steal the protections coming out of the Athena and the Ares. And now Team Solo Mid asks themselves, okay, who do we want to go against in the solo lane? And who do we want to make sure they don't get? And they actually ban out the Odin. Yes, that is a great ban. Once again, they're, they like to target Dare to Care because he makes such a huge impact for Team Eager. But he, but he already has his god. That could also go solo. They could have easily put Anatoly solo with Athena, which is very strong against Tyr, able to taunt out Fearless, and then pick up the Odin for jungle. It would oh, have been wait, a wait, 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 perfect wait. team comp that Eager likes to run. Wait, is, is it, isn't this the old school matchup of Ares versus Tyr back in the heyday? And it was Anatoly, right? I, it could be. This, right, but this, no, no, no. This, this, um, what I'm saying was this is like a flashback, right? Yeah. Anatoly ran this. Yes. Okay. All the time. There it is. And it's going it. to be an on her locked in. This, I actually, I, I completely forgot about that. You're right. Ares just completely counters out Tears Fearless. While he does max his power cleave, there's still a ton of free I mean, poke it, he gets on him. It's not like you pick it into it every time and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to win this one. It's it, it's just that, like a minor thing. And Ao Guang. Ao Kong going to be picked up for jungle. So Ao Love Kong, this God. very good against bruisers and tanky targets, especially once he gets them to that 30% range, he can simply execute them. So will we see double hunters here? Or will Neath be the only one? Anatoly not exactly known for it. And okay. So Medusa going into the duo lane. That'll be Zatman's Dusa. And then the Neath will be going into the solo lane. So... Looking at it there, they do have a good amount of setup potential, but it's still going to be very hard for them to make it out of the lane, in the duo lane, into the mid-harpies. 
It, it will be, especially if Ares can't find his chains and get the poke off. And I mean, Sylvanas just going to be able to control this lane. One thing I do want to note about this Al Kuang pick is there's two cripples on Team Eager. So if, if Gars goes in with his blink, they could very easily find a chain or a whirlpool and lock him in place. So talk to me a little bit about the Al Kuang pick. Al Kuang is very strong early. His... If he maxes Lightning Storm, it's a ton of free poke every five seconds. Additionally, against these tanky gods that Eager likes to run, executes are huge. It's why you see Thanatos, very, the only use Thanatos really has late game is the fact that he transitions into this tank, and then he's able to execute targets. And we will see as Tyr, as well as Gars on Al Guang, will be going for a little bit of invade and... They're going to get the deep wards down, and they're going to recall and see exactly what they plan on doing. And that's just going to be Divios who's recalling, and he just wants to make sure he stays super, super safe and grabs himself some mana pots there, which will help him in lane just a bit. Tier, he, he can go through mana, especially with the way Divios likes to play him. is full-blown aggressive and look to kill instantly. I actually really wanted to see the Hunter versus Hunter in mid because we haven't, we haven't seen that yet. A lot of teams have been running these hunters mid, primarily People are scared. Boosh is the only one who will play multiple hunters. He plays on her, he plays Uller, and he plays Neath. Most players are only playing Neath mid. I mean, where else would you... I mean, you can't send the Poseidon. You're not sending Poseidon into the duo lane. Oh, no. Zatman's I mean, not playing that. No, I mean... And you're not sending it into the solo lane. I mean, I, I guess I'm just you could. I wanted to see it. I'm I get not that. I should have done it. I just wanted I, I'm to see just, the hunter. I'm just hunter. clarifying for you know the viewers to let you know that it was it's a oh, okay. really bad decision. Okay. Gars and Divio's here. They're gonna look for an invade, but Eager expected it. They actually did their blue, and now they're doing their speed. And I don't think TSM's gonna be able to get close enough in time. Gars and, rooted out, and he's gonna take a ton of poke. Yep, uh, Divio's will be here. The taunt, not there. He's only got the dash and. Now, oh man, if Divius Anatoly had stuck poke. to that, that would have been first blood for sure. But oh, yeah. Anatoly got scared and actually backflips out of the fight. He could have got his heal and really survived Gar's damage, but he backed out there. Missed opportunity for Eager. Yep. And the blue buff is still up for Team Solo Mid, but they don't really have to worry about Eager actually engaging on this because the, the wave is going to be even. And because of the shenanigans off the beginning, we're actually going to see a like probably like a minute 30 rotation instead of these very, very fast rotations that we're used to seeing. The pull from Sylvanas is good. They're on the Ares. They want to make sure Aurora does not get going early. That Root. is the key. The Root's good. Down goes Aurora, and that is how TSM's going to start up. That's double a double kill. kill for Rama. That is the strength of Sylvanas. You saw Zapman and Aurora dump everything they had into that wave you and not kill a single minion, and then a great... Great pull from Ionic, locking Aurora in the minions. Snoopy's able to find the kill, and then Zatman just staying a little bit too late. You can't, you can't give Ionic Sylvanas. No. You can't do it. He hit that pull free. Like, there was no root. There was no there, setup. You can't give him this god the same way. I don't know about Jeff Henlaw on it. I still assume that he's insanely good with it, but you just can't give him Sylvanas. I mean, he makes it look so effortless. And Early when it's rotation, so though, by Eager. Oh, Lassus actually decided against it, goes back, and now he's committing again. That's going to cost him just a bit. Taunt will hit as well. If, if he didn't back off there, they would have killed Ionic, or very likely killed Ionic. Well, it definitely would have been close, eh? Boosh and is now, baiting this. Boosh hiding, and now, I mean, uh, the on her in the mid is just, that is, that is a bold, bold play. I like it. Twice now, Eager had second thoughts, and I think it cost them. First off, Anatoly backflips away against a fight where they're level two against two level ones. After that, Lassus doesn't know if he wants to commit over to the dual lane, goes back to mid, and then decides he wants to commit. But Woo! now Ionic. Ionic's here. Desert Fear is going to be there as well. Kraken's going to slow him down, and Neath Ultimate will help, but not enough as Snoopy will take to the sky, and he's just spinning around. <laughs> Making sure no one else was coming as he realized he had no potential of killing Lassus at all. I'm surprised he didn't all. like spend some damage into Lassus, make right? sure he had to back right yeah. then and there. But I think he was just more excited. He was like, oh yeah, we got another kill. Okay, this is cool. 3-0. Three, -oh. Three minutes. Experience lead definitely in the favor of Team Solo Mid as they take both Harpies and 1,500 already. And this is, this is when TSM is the scariest is when they have a lead. 
I mean, they were losing last game and still the aggressors. The question this time is, are Eager going to be able to hold out like Team Solo Mid did when they were behind? This is going to be a good test for Eager. <laughs> This whole game is just, that's that's been our whole storyline for Eager is, oh, this game's their first real test, and now it's, oh, well, they have the lead, this is their test, you know what I mean? Like, I think they've proved themselves at this point. They did, but, I mean, they proved that with the lead, they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Team Solo mid. They weren't even, they were ahead. I got you. Now they're behind. Can they make a comeback like we saw, say, Denial or Cog do? Both those teams were behind in their games, able to make a comeback. Lass is going to go ahead and clear through this. He really wants to kill the Boosh. And, you know, my question is, is, so we normally see Spear the Magus come out a little bit early uh, from Poseidon just because, you know, they're going against another mage. Is, is that the same kind of idea we'll see here, even though the Boosh is obviously a hunter. Yeah, because you just want to get that penetration off and it synergizes so well with Whirlpool. It's it's the ticks. That's right. It's why Spear of the Magus works so yes. It it works so well with Agni is all the tick damage and dot damage you're getting out of Poseidon with his Whirlpool. Freezing the lane is Snoopy. And if you're wondering why Sylvanas is They're baiting this. Yep. Yeah, you're really trying to do this and dare to care. Well, not going to be quick enough, and the boost, look at that, man, already rotated over there. And now Divios is right here, and he's going to walk straight up and actually get this. My God, I can hear him giggling from here, and this is a great play. Lawbringer comes down as well. They're going to commit everything in, and, and it's always going to get cleaned up as Divios will be rewarded that kill 4-0, and it, it's starting to spiral out of control here for Team Eager. They, they, they need defensive wards, and they need them fast. Yeah, you saw Anatoly backflip there. He tried to time it where he would get the blue buff just barely off. It must have been under 10 health. Woo! Cracking in the middle, though. Lassus gives himself a kill, gobbling up Al Guang, saying his Kraken is better than the Dragon. As... I, I mean, Poseidon is very, very good against Al Guang because of the cripple. Yeah, and because, well, Al Guang's relatively squishy. He's incredibly squishy. And there's one thing that... Poseidon's love to do, and that's find a god a little bit away and blow him up. He, he's a pick god. He's a pick mm -hmm. mage. As now Anatoly playing the Neath, and well, he's got a tough time here going up against Divios on the tier, and now we will just see Zatman and Snoopy kind of trade out. And if we could take a look at Snoop or uh, Zatman, I would like to see what his experience is at. And he's about halfway to level nine, whereas Snoopy. He's got a much better lead. He's about to hit level 10, depending on how this one goes. The taunt comes out. There's no follow-up, though. They don't have the Kraken available. They already used it. Cripple just off the mark, and Aurora's just going to run out of here. With Soldier Fortune, no, he's not. He gets pulled back in a lot of trouble. No escape comes out as well. Gars and Boosh are able to slice through him, and that, this is why you can't give this guy Dion. I mean, twice now we've seen him <laughs> just free pull on that and get multiple kills off it. And that's the weakness of Ares when you die early. You just die before your ult goes off. TSM knows that, takes advantage of it. They they wisely stop attacking the Gold Fury. They're on Lassus. Lassus right in execute range. And Team Solo Mid has destroyed the Gold Fury as well as they've destroyed the team of Eager as there is just three members alive and Zatman, he can't do anything. His ultimate was there, but it, it just wasn't enough. and. Th this is what's scary. I mean, they, they have this lead, and they never let go of being the aggressors. I mean, it's not even eight minutes, and we've seen eight kills. Yeah, it, it's a lot, and it's going to be hard for them. I mean, Divios was in that fight. He has Mystical Mail finished before eight minutes. He I don't didn't even start know that's any possible. Other, he didn't start Bluestone. He knew he would have been safe in the lane. He and Oh, man. Anatoly was able to steal out that blue. So that is going to be rough for him because he doesn't have blue stone. But the fact that he has mystical mail online already, Anatoly's not going to be able to fight this. He can't. And it really, the sh I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the tier versus Neath matchup, it's, it's really just Neath trying to god to, like, poke him out. I mean, that's, yeah. And, and Neath does have the advantage when he can find the poke, but tier has a self-heal in his kit. Gar's in a lot of trouble. Good job. Great beads out of him and... The water illusion will save his life as he will teleport away and just blow it up instantly. And that's the one difference we've seen from Season 1 to Season 2 is blowing up that illusion yes. as fast as you can to set it on cooldown so you can have it again instead of leaving it up. You're fooling no one. In fact, it actually gives you away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your clone is actually looking in the direction you went. But now Gar's 
Kraken's going to be just off the mark there. As it'll do some damage, but not enough. As now here it comes. Last is hitting the Trident. Boosh now full pedal to the floor as he wants last. As he's able to get it, the cripple will stop him from jumping, and they'll get a return kill. But they did lose Lasses in the mix of it. Yeah, two for one, though. Eager screaming worth. They're able to kill the Boosh and Gars. Yep. Gars actually dying a lot here. And Divya is really starting to try to bully this lane as mid Harpies are getting ready to come up again at the nine-minute mark. And we've only seen one Gold Fury attempted, and it's already been taken as they, we are three minutes away from the next one coming up as Snoopy will try to poke away here at the Aurora on Ares, but it's it's not going to do so much. Yeah, and that's really the strength of these cripples against Gars. That's why you're seeing him fall over anyone else on TSM, is once his beads are baited out, he can't use Water Illusion to escape from Lassus' Whirlpool or Aurora's Chains. Now, you saw are, him fall there. Are we still building Al Guang the same way as we saw before, the double rings and then a Bancroft's after? You know, now we're seeing more of this magical damage Al Kuang, at least early on instead of the early auto attack damage because it's very hard to get your auto attacks off against these players especially against Poseidon if he's trying to stick on a Poseidon he's going to die whoo blink in from Ionic he's right in the middle the whirlpool is going to slow him down Boosh gets yet another kill four one and two on on her clearing the wave and that that reverted change of his clear is now huge is this is that man he has no mana He's going to try to die to the tower here, and, well, Rama's going to take to the sky, and he just needs to hit one, and yeah, he, he did. Him. Gars is going to be able to get this kill. That is that is not worth for Zatman. He stole away a buff, but he's going to lose multiple waves and his life to Gars. He, he's trying to do something here, which you can't blame him for doing it. I mean, they're down 3,000 gold. You have to make plays at that point. You have to. You, I well, mean, we saw TSM. They were the aggressors last game, and now Divios, he could be in trouble. Yep, Dare to Care hits the taunt on him as well. Anatoly, this will be big. Divius, he has the juggle as well. Anatoly might die here. Backflip will keep him alive, and Neath will leave with 18 health. Yeah, just barely making out of that one. One more Mystical Mail Tick would have actually killed him. <laughs> like, if... if Gar Not figuratively, if, actually. No, actually, because it's hitting for about 40. If he stayed alive for that split second, he would have made it out. Or he would have killed Anatoly. As now we will see <laughs> Ionic just gets another pull. He gets this one rooted, and they're just going to burst down to Roar, and he's just not tanky. Desert Fury will clean this one up. And uh, the Kraken right on the mark there, but he's forced to beads out to avoid the cripple of Whirlpool. And Lassus, he, he doesn't just have the damage yet. He's only got level two of Bancrofts. And he really, once he gets Bancrofts, these stories will be a little bit different. Boosh won't be walking out of there with half health. He'll be walking out of there with an eighth of health. Yeah, and he had the beads there. Beads were beads one, so they're down for 180 seconds. Something Oof. important to take note of if Lassus can recognize that. And if and if Boosh goes sprint, which he's likely to do, he should be able to hit a Kraken on him next time. And he, he just finished Bancroft, so he's going to start hitting. So we've, we've kind of seen a standard of what supports build and when they build it. But now, out of Ionic, we're seeing a Magi's Blessing rushed first. He's so far ahead, and he's basically looking to counter out Aurora's ult. The Water Illusion will hit. Ionic will throw Wrath of Terror as well. And Aurora just getting bullied at this point as the boost is just going to follow right behind Sylvanas. Grover just doing everything. And the Lacerate's going to be off the mark, and he's going to end up rooting Zatman, who now takes more damage than he was expecting to from the Snoopy. And now Tyr, he takes the tower already at 12.30, which doesn't make any sense because he's going against Neath. He has teleport up too, and Gold Fury started by TSM. Divios is going to be able to be in this fight if he elects to. I don't even know if Eager's going to go for this. Is now the Athena will come in, and they bait out the ultimate, and in behind him comes Divios. Yep, and they want this. Now the cripple just off the mark. They have the taunt down already, and Boosh all by himself trying to burn down Zapman. Not going to happen. Gar is not wasting the execute. He knows the targets he wants, and Lass is able to come up with a big kill there. There's those beads down I was talking yep. about. But Lass is very, very happy with that result. And now I'm not sure what the timer is like on the Kraken, but I don't know if they can go for this. And Divya is really oh, no. just zoning him out completely. And he does have to be careful of Lassus, uh, as he will be able to box him around. And Anatoly joins the fight as well. And Divya is just going to leave with half his health. And giggle his way back to lane and buy some power boots.
Yeah, and now Team Solomid sitting with a 5,000 gold lead at 13 minutes. 6,000 in experience, so Eager staying alive in the levels. They're not No escape hit in the middle. Too far ahead. Gars gets pulled. He, he's dead. Beads are down. Yeah. Anatoly's going to be able to clean him up, and it, it seems to me like this Al Guang really is high risk, high reward. I mean, it's it's the team comp that Eager drafted. It's very hard for Al Kuang to do anything. I'm surprised they last picked this. They're, we're definitely looking to burn Ares before he gets his ult off, but... Great job by Eager. They recognize the timer on these beads, and they're able to find two kills in the Boosh and in Dagars to basically recoup a little bit of the loss they yeah. took from the Gold Fury. Well, what's funny is this is exactly what Bart and I were talking yesterday about, like, the premier supports. Mm -hmm. I was like, my God, Encon got away yesterday, and Wu Kong was some of the best plays I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, he might be the best. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, there's this guy named Ionic, and he goes, who's that? And he goes, oh, yeah, you're right. Ionic's really good, too. And I'm like, but Incon's like great, <laughs> you know. But like Ionic, I mean, he's one zero and eight. There's a lot he of never, really good sports. He never, he never stops, just impressing me at all times. He's been playing fantastically, and really, you have to credit just like his free pools that he's been hitting all game, and even here, he's looking to pull Lassus. Oh yeah, and, and honestly, Lassus has done so well with dealing with this assault of TSM. Yes, I mean AFK who they're used to scrimming, you know, they, they may focus a little bit of time on the middle, but not a whole bunch. It's really more out to the solo lane and or the duo lane, and Lassus has prevented a lot of deaths from himself, and Divios is just going to get his flesh seared here, and the members of Eager are all rotating. Are they really going to go for this? The taunt hits down as well. They dumped so much damage into Divios. Uh, luckily, there was no ultimates used, so... They're not, they're not completely upset by it, and the biggest thing they have going for him right now is the Kraken of Lassus, and Boosh all by himself trying to get a buff here, and the beads come out early, and he thought the taunt was going to come out, but no dice. Nope. But now we actually see a great Kraken Woo! come through. Boosh in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Boosh now turned to stone as well. They got to have the follow-up and manages to stay alive. A roar, no escape on one, and now that'll just be on Ionic as Snoopy takes to the sky. He gets gobbled up. And now Al Guang looking for more. He sees Aurora with no mana, and he comes right back down. Guards with a double kill, looking for the triple. Lassus is ever so slow. He gets the triple kill. Can he get the quadra? He's not going to dive because, well, there's still a tier one tower. And Zatman overstaying his welcome, and Guards was so close to pulling that trigger. Team Solo mid again. Every foe. Oh my God. God. He went in and delayed 4K. quadra for the Guards. And. Zapman just did not recognize how much burst that Team Solo mid was going to be able to put into him in under a second there. And Eager continues to try and focus down Divio sometimes. And we saw this mistake in Cog vs. Denial. You can't put so much focus into these Warriors and Guardians who have these abilities to get out because your carries are just going to get turned on. Yeah, they're, they're really just big, tanky distractions. Yeah. But uh, the, the thing that's weird is even at a professional level, you, you realize as soon as you're attacking them, like, you're like, okay, this is what they want. They want me to dump everything into this warrior. And then on the other side, they're like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I want. But you still end up doing it because they still hurt you very badly. And oh, they're yeah. right I in your face. You can't just let them sit there. No, it's, it's really weird how you have to prioritize it. And that's when the, the days of the, the, the mages running everywhere, well, it's a little bit of a different story. Yep. And now Team Solomid firmly in control of this one, like they have been. They're likely to look for some more picks. They're probably going to focus on baiting out Fire Giant after this next Gold Fury comes up. The Boosh, the Boosh is what I've noticed about him ever since the Spring Finals is he came up to me and he said, you know, man, I love playing gods who I can outplay my other mm -hmm. person. And I was like, okay. And now with this Hunter meta, he has just that. Yep. And you're going to see him only play gods where he can just outplay people. And he's... He doesn't stream. He doesn't put himself out there. He just silently dismantles people. I mean, that's the same with Divios. I mean, Divios streams a little bit, but... He should stream more. Yeah. Gars, though, looking for a fight here. He gets another pull here. He's on Dare to Care, and a 315 crit plus an impale into the wall. Dare to Care in a lot of trouble, and down he goes, and Gars now going to push up here. He hits the beads as well. I mean, Dare to Care just taunted an on her who's critting him for 300 at 18 minutes. 
you can't. I, it's very rough. Taunt is counteracting. Whew. Here right comes. Now. He knows beads are down on someone. Here comes the Kraken. Kraken's gonna burst down Ionic, and down goes Ionic. Last is able to get that kill. Zatman trying to turn someone into stone. Boosh now preemptive beads as now Rama will force him out more. Divios has joined the party. He wants Lassus dead, and he doesn't have the switch mail. stance yet. Mystical uh, mail. Hey, oh, he gets it. Now switch stance will be coming offline relatively soon here as he is looking to heal himself up, and he does just that. And now he has the damage side as Anatoly hits a big root. Yeah, but now Derdicare is trying to find him, not able to get it. He's getting incredibly low. Gars finds the kill. TSM just running eager dry, and now they're focusing on this middle Phoenix. Every, it's it it never it's like once we stop talking about Gars and not even like talking about Gars as like a good player or anything like that just like in general like just mentioning him in shows and stuff like that the next week he always just like comes out and just crushes everyone I mean Gars is always crushing it's so hard to deal with him gold fury up just so team much solo talent going to grab this that's I mean that's team solo mid it's five players some of the best in their positions that's why they are the premier online team in North America. An average age of 12. It's like 14. <laughs> uh, the cripple actually hitting Anatoly there as well. The first pull finally missed out of Ionic is now he's going to blink forward and trying to get his team involved as the cripple will come out from the whirlpool and Gars is all up in the front of it as Aurora hits chains on two and now they're really trying to turn this here. They have to be careful. There's so much sustain coming out of Ionic. Big Kraken comes in as well. They isn't able to get the full blown damage off of it and now here it comes. They get sucked back in. Aurora's able to take out one. Ionic in a lot of trouble. Snoopy in the sky looking for the final one just off the mark. Gars forced out and my god if he eager did not just turn this around. Aurora and comes out with a triple kill Zatman on that has one. the option. Is the blink up for Gars? There it is, but he's not going to have the damage to kill anyone. And Zatman finds the last kill. D aside for Team Eager. I can't believe it. What in the hell happened in that team fight? Team Solo mid got a little bit too split up there. And even Lassus, who missed his ultimate. I mean, he hit it, but everyone was on the outer edge. Not a single person got hit in the middle. Team Solo mid, story of staying too long. Dare to care now. They're going straight for the fire giant here. They have the time to do it and eager. Well, if they if they win this game, they screw up everyone's predictions, so <laughs> always gotta worry about that. But this this fire giant's uh it's free. Is, it, is it free? Is that how you say I mean, it? Yeah, it, it's free. Just, it's as free as Snoopy is. Team Solo mid just coming off a of response here. No Giannis ult to get, close the gap. Eager, they're still behind in gold, but they have a fire giant to recoup that. They're staying alive. I think that pretty much caught Team Solo mid completely by surprise. And now we'll see. Fortunately for TSM, they still have their jungle buffs. Eager didn't have the time to go in and steal everything away from them, which isn't... It, it, it's like a little morale boost. I mean, you get the you get the red buff on your hunter, and you're like, okay, you know, I feel a little bit better about myself, and then you know, kind of go from there. The question is, can Team Eager farm up enough during their Fire Giant buff to start competing with Team Solomid afterwards? Because Team Solomid, they still may aggress. What what's the experience difference here, Mr. Clumsy? Oof, sixty-seven hundred. <sighs> I mean, they, they really just need TSM to have one more sloppy fight. Yeah, I mean, or they overcommit to a tower while Team Eager has full Fire Giant buff. That also is good as well. So, Spear the Magus done. Getting ready to go into Gem of Isolation will be Lassus. Mid-Guardian male finish for Dare to Care. He also has a Spirit Robe making him... Well, he's got a lot of protections, but that Mid-Guardian male, that's slow is really going to help deal with the two hunters. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a hide of the Nemean Lion come out of him next. Eager pushing up tier one. Gars was looking to split push on the right lane, but recognizing that Eager's pushing up, and he's going to have to back off and regroup with his team here. Eager, they're trying to bait someone into the jungle. I actually would love to see a hide of the Nemean Lion on the Ares. I mean, Ares is always getting attacked as soon as he goes into no escape. And that's like, free damage for him. It's it, it damage on damage. He definitely needs to tang up here against these hunters who are basically killing him before he can get his ult off. He has sovereignty, which is great physical protection, but it's just not enough right now. As we will now see them just push down and take everything they can. Eager's that tower had smart. no health left. And 
Eager is not being over aggressive. They're taking the free golden XP on the map. They're making sure Team Solo mid does not get a, le a further But the question is, it, they haven't really cut it that much because on the other end, TSM's doing the exact same thing. I mean, their main experience they're going to get is from kills. Yeah, but the later this game goes, the the closer the gap, or the, the smaller the gap, I think. Okay. Simply because Team Solo mid here, they've, they're they about an item ahead, and Team, uh, Team Eager has reduced it to about half an item at this point. On her now. <laughs> Otter rotating around. <laughs> Zada, she killed me, buddy. Yeah. Oh. You're, you're, you're a silly little girl. Here it comes. The five-man grouping. Backstreet is back. Starring Lassus. As they will now push into the jungle trying to find a pick. There's just so much vision down. It's just so hard for them to get this. And... They, they, are, want they want this gold fury. That, How much longer is their fire giant lasting? It can't be too much longer. Fire giant's coming up in a minute and 52 seconds. So, so they have it for 50. They'll, they'll have it for about 35 seconds of this team fight. Once gold fury spawns. Here comes TSM. This could be the game-changing fight here. The talk comes down on Divios. He gets the power cleave into Fearless, and he's forced all the way out. Zatman goes for it. The cripple. Well, doesn't stop that ult from happening. And now no escape will bring him back even more. Boosh, as well as Ionic and Snoopy, are in one small area. Ionic blinks in. Well, not enough. They take down Divios. And that might be enough for them to warrant go ahead and starting it up. And it is. They're, that's exa They needed the fight. Yep. Now let's take a look at the experience here. They had one fire giant. What does that say, Adonis? 7,000 experience, 3,700 gold. Eager has almost completely eliminated Team Solo mid's lead. But their fire giant just fell off, and Divios will be alive for the next spawn of it. For now, Eager's going to try and push up and get this tower in a 5v4. And this is what they want. I mean, this is another 1,500 gold, which will also cut away the lead as well. And Snoopy, you can see, he's really trying to poke him out of this one. And... They will welcome this. The chains go down here. That's going to be the cripple here. But no one following up from Eager, which might be a little bit of a misplay. Great job on Gars, though, holding off on using his beads. And, oh, he gets his speed. That's big. That's important. Very, very big. Rooted in place will be Dare to Care, as now Gars is going to look to shred through him here. He has Snoopy as well. Divio's trying to push forward. The members of Eager are trying to retreat, and the members of TSM say, no, you will fight. And they just take a commanding presence over top of this Fire Giant. Fire Giant spawning in two seconds. That was the bad time to get picked. When Divio's got picked, they were okay. But losing Dare to Care as Fire Giant spawns, not a good look. Lassus trying to sneak under Divios. Can he get to the Fire Giant in time? Well, we'll see. And he's not. Going to throw the Whirlpool, and he might pay with his life he here. He put himself in combat, so he can't blink. And now instant preemptive beads. As Snoopy takes to the sky as well. They want to kill Lassus the fastest as they can. Kraken's going to come down. It's just not going to be enough. If he stayed out of combat, he would have been able to blink away there safely, trying to get damage. Now Zatman, though, going to get turned on. The beads will come out. Zatman forces out Petrify. Gar's still pushing forward. Gar's gets another kill. Al Guang in the jungle is not to be messed with. The slow coming down from the shifting sands as the pillar will emerge. And now Ionic will come forward, throw out the wisp, and now this phoenix will fall. It's possible the Titan will fall next. Yeah, they're just going to take the free golden XP. They're going to grab this tower on the left side and likely push up another Phoenix here. The gap has definitely closed in North America. This It is no longer Team Solo mid just running through teams. No, and the, the gap is insanely short as it is... 27 minutes and 30 seconds. We're right on par with the standard time that games end in Season 2, Summer Split. And, well, we've seen 37 kills, 24 on the side of TSM, and it looks like it is just going to go the way of Team Solo mid. But Team they Solo do have the ability. They need the dream. Team they, Solo mid doesn't even have the highest damage numbers. Yeah. They, ha they need the dream. Eager needs it. They need the Athena taunt into the no escape. Plus the Kraken, and then somehow you get Petrify in there as well. They need it all. And it's going to take a little bit of luck and a little bit of the stars aligning perfectly, but they can do it.
Yeah, Lassus starting to get a lot of damage online now. He's second in the lead next to Anatoly, and Anatoly hasn't found too many kills, even though he's putting out all this damage in team fights. Yeah, he hasn't. But, I mean, Anatoly has definitely exceeded my expectations in this matchup, uh, to say the very least. He's been playing fantastically this whole series now. He's going to have to play even better in this final couple minutes, unless Team Solo mid. It's going to be rough for them. It's going to be rough for Eager. Boosh rotates over. He's with Snoopy. The two hunters holding hands, dancing together, doing things. The pillar will slow that one up, and Beads will be forced out as well. As now, we will start to see the aggress. The roll's good. Dare to Care getting shredded. And now that's a Magi's Blessing on top of the no escape. And it's already popped. Ionic did a fantastic job. Last is split off from his team. Down he goes. That's the pick they wanted. And now it looks as though it's a full push right through mid. Yep, they're going to keep up the aggression. I think they're going to grab right tower just because one player is down. They still want to play it safe. This is the correct decision, I think. Snoopy's going to finish off this tower. They're going to finish off the last Phoenix. They know Eager is not a team that they can just run through and fight right now. And now it is up to the right Phoenix here. Eager, they have to be able to hold. The power will prevent Dare to Care from getting even closer. Phoenix still alive. No one prioritizing it, but look at the numbers coming out of Snoopy. He's now on the Phoenix. Boosh gets himself a double kill as now the cripple will hit as well. And those are 503 crits right to the dome piece. Boosh gets himself another triple kill. And he had one hell of a set to say the least. Boosh played fantastically in both games, showing he could play multiple hunters at the highest level. Yeah, and that's an on her mid, which, is that the first, that's the second on her mid we've ever seen, right? Yeah, Boosh played it last time as well. Yeah. So, just... Uller, on her... And Neath. He could play, he could play multiple hunters in that role, and let's take a look at First Blood real quick, though, and Team Solo mid, this was not the same game for them, and it was this double kill. This, I forgot all about this, but th what a way to start off the game is... A double kill going onto your late game hyper carry to get him even closer to the late game hyper carry area. And I mean, there's only so much you can do. And really, for me, it's it was the mid and early game was just eonic. Yeah. Right? It, it was just like a big sign came out and a guy on a magic carpet was just like, oh yeah. Sylvanas. Yeah, I mean, they set up that double kill. It, Ionic got the double kill, or excuse me, Snoopy got the double kill, but Ionic pulled Ares without oh God, yeah. setting up the root. He was able to save the root later so Snoopy could secure his auto attack. In game number one, the jungle camp belonged to Eager. Game number two, it team belongs to Team Solo Mid, winning 63% of the mid harpy battles. Yeah, and it was really these objectives this time. Team Solo Mid was able to get the early gold series. They didn't allow Eager to establish an objective dominant team like they yeah, did last game. For sure. And I, I think everyone can safely say that Eager, well, not only do you belong here, but you can also go against everyone. A couple things change in that set, mm -hmm. and it goes the way of Eager. Yeah. I mean, they, that game number one, that was as close as we're ever going to see a game. It, it was very back and forth, and I mean, Eager showing that even in game two, when they were behind, they were it's finding team fight wins. We saw them de-aside out, uh, excuse me, we saw them de-aside out Team Solo Mid yep. when Team Solo Mid stu uh, stood around a little too long. This guy, the Boosh, player of the game, finally. Should have had it in both games, but 10-3 and 11 on the on her mid. And you can just watch these highlight reel plays as well he doesn't miss auto attacks and he just likes outplaying everyone yeah and boosh played fantastically and he was repeatedly trying to outplay his opponents like you said earlier that's what he likes to do you saw him jumping in 1v3 he would die but he would also find the kill he was looking for and he was just all over and team solo as a team just playing so well together. Yeah, they, they definitely look cohesive, to say the very least. And right there, you can see Zatmanny threw the Petrify off just a little bit to the right just to secure a kill. And Boosh is his positioning. That's why you watch this guy. You if, if he streamed, you would watch him to figure out where the hell you stand. But instead, you can just watch him on the SPL. And he's always in the perfect position at every time. Yeah, and that's and why he doesn't die. 
these duo hunters that Team Solomid is running are so good against this Athena jungle because late game, unless Athena is so far ahead, the second she taunts the hunter, she's tanking three to four hundred damage crits repeatedly. And we saw that happen just right here. Again, he taunts, Dare to Care taunts out Boosh, and he just is running crits through him. I mean, Sorry, I was leaning forward there, but you could just see he was like, oh, that's a triple kill. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for ending it. Uh, joining us on the line here is going to be Mr. Ionic. Ionic, how are you, my friend? Hi, I'm fantastic. How are you? Ah, good to see. All right, man. So first question here. Were you surprised that Eager went toe-to-toe -to -toe with you guys the way they did after your guys' last matchup in 2015? 14? 14. 14. Um, they definitely improved a lot as a team, so um, props to them for that. But I think we expected it to be a tough game, and I, we expected it to be good games. But uh, So I wouldn't say we're surprised now, especially since there's scrim partners with AFK. Yeah, cool. All right, so you got Sylvanas. Were you surprised they gave you this god? Or were you just like, oh my yeah. god, this is Christmas? Yeah, it, pr pretty much, yeah. Please keep giving me the tree. <laughs> I mean, I mean... I would look. They banned out your Geb. What do you think? Is, what do you think's better, your Geb or your Sylvanas? Uh, I would prefer to have Sylvanas, to be honest. So I'm like totally fine with you banning Geb if you give me the tree. <laughs> okay, there you Just go. Just give me, give me the tree. <laughs> give him the tree. <laughs> That's all you want in life is the tree. I see you, my friend. All right, so. Obviously, you guys have been scrimming against Cloud9 pretty much exclusively. Everyone knows that. Are you guys just going to continue to run this du dual hunter meta until it basically just doesn't work? Uh, we're going to just run what we win with, and right now we're winning with dual hunters, so until that changes and we find something that beats it, and anyway, the, me the meta is constantly changing, so... Yep. And we're constantly trying to find like new things to see what's going to be what people are picking right now. Is um, Divius is Divius kind of unique? Is Divius Go ever going to run a hunter? Nope. Ah, would you? I would. I would even, love to see it. He runs Giannis occasionally, and then anything tanky, so he could just laugh in your face. <laughs> Maybe you could build a hunter tanky. All right, Yannick. Uh, before we let you go, any shout outs you want to give out? Uh, shout out to Jigs. He helped us immensely oh, yeah. in preparing for Eager. It was he was pretty instrumental. Um, shout out to my team. They played really awesome today. Um, go watch my stream. I stream at twitch.tv slash Ionic. And yeah, please keep giving me the tree. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Take it easy, Ionic. Good guy. He just he just, he just wants great. his Sylvanas, man. Ionic's great. What is, what is he, 17? Uh, I think he's 17 now. He's, he's very competitive, too. Full life ahead of him, at, full at, of hopes and dreams. At the SWC... Cog Red were the favorites going into it. They took third, and I think Yannick was probably the most crushed player at that event. And you can see him just chucking, chugging forward in season two and playing fantastically. That'll do it for Saturday here in week number three. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at Sunday and see what all is ahead of us here. So there's your results. It was a bunch of two O's, but tomorrow, Epsilon Esports versus Trig Esports, Night's Watch versus Titan. And Legion will be taking on Cloud9. Yeah, and Eager, I would say they passed their test. Oh, God, yeah. They, you, you are, you're <laughs> stealing lines from me I already, I don't man. Care. They passed their test, and now it's going to be Legion's job on Sunday to you. go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cloud9. It is. All right, well, thank you all very much for watching today. We will be back tomorrow at the same time. Stay tuned.